Hello. My name is Shanta. I'm a storyteller. Glad to be with you. I'm going to tell some of my favorite stories, play some of my favorite instruments. This one is called the djembe. This one was made in the United States, but it's based on the traditional djembe of West Africa. Uh, let's see what I can do with it. Here we go. There once was a monkey who lived in a tree. That big tree was down by the sea, and in that tree were wonderful, delicious mangoes. Monkey ate mangoes every day, and when he was full, with mangoes he'd play, tossing them into the water where they'd splash, then disappear. They disappeared into the mouth of a shark, a shark who was out on a daily lark, catching the mangoes and becoming the monkey's friend. The monkey threw mangoes which the shark caught, they played all day, they never fought. Got so friendly, the shark shouted at him. furry friend. But I don't have it with me, scared monkey sang. I, I, I left it in my tree to hang like all monkeys do before we go to sleep at night. So take me home, I'll put it back inside. By the time we do that, Chief Shark could have died. So hurry and take me home. There's no more time to waste. Shark moaned swam close to shore when monkey hit the ground he ran but turned back to say he'd soon return shark swam around for an hour he waited shouted for monkey heard an answer he hated just what are you thinking <laughs> you'll never get a heart from me shark swam home to a fate we don't know he probably never ate another mango stays safe and dry up in his tree. Now it's all right to be a friend, but you have to consider how things could end. Not all sharks are swimming in the sea. Not all sharks are swimming in the sea. A shark is a shark and a shark he'll always be. All right, you know, I got I got interested in African stories a long time ago. It, it had something to do with ancestors. Do any of you know what ancestors are? That's, that's right, people in your family who lived a long time ago. Well, I didn't know, I did not know that I had ancestors from Africa until I was about 19 years old. And when I found that out, I got so excited about it. I began to read books about Africa and, and tried to learn as much as I could about Africa. And the things that excited me most were the stories and the songs of Africa. And that's what I would like to share with you today. So Monkey and Shark, it's a West African story. And Jimbe is an African drum. And 
And this instrument is an African bell. Some people call it agogo. And if you look at the agogo, you will notice that it has two parts. A little part and a big part. It's made of iron, so it's pretty heavy as bells go. And the little part makes a high sound. The big part makes a low sound. And that's pretty much how it goes in the, in the family of mu musical instruments. The violin makes a high sound. The viola makes a lower sound. The cello makes a sound, lower sound than that. And the bass violin makes lower sounds than that. Any instrument you find, the flute makes high sounds. The piccolo makes a higher sound than the flute. The saxophone makes lower sounds than the flute does. All the world of instruments, small, high, big, low. That's how it goes. Anyway, <coughs> this, I go, go. I'm going to try to see if I can make up a song with just two sounds. And music is, is organized sound. Now, if I would just do like that, that would be noise. But if I put some organization, some order to the sound, then it's music. It's rhythm. All right, so here we have a go-go. Okay. Do any of you have chores to do at home? Mm, yeah. Does anybody in your family have a job? A job they do at home? Or a job they have to go and take the car or the bus or the train and go to work. Well, there are some people in West Africa who say that people did not always have to go to work. The sky was so close to the earth that all you had to do was reach up, grab a piece of the sky, and you could have your breakfast, your lunch, and your dinner. Ah, people had everything they needed. Nobody had to work. But after a while, people began to take more than they needed. And then what they didn't eat, they just throw on the ground. Now, the sky noticed this, and the sky was not pleased. One day, the sky said to the people, What's going on? Why are you just talking, tossing parts of me on the ground? This is not right. If you don't make some changes around here, I will. So the people, they got very careful. They were careful only to take as much as they needed. They were careful to, to eat everything they took. They were careful not to drop any crumbs on the ground and things were smooth again. Everything was good until that day. That day when a fella came along, took a piece of the sky big enough for five families to eat on for four months he took only three bites out of it, threw the rest of it over his shoulder and kept on walking. Now the sky noticed. The sky was very upset. He had warned everybody. He didn't say a word. 
he just started moving up and up and up and up until the sky got to where it is today. Now, when the people realized that the sky was moving up, they cried out, sky, no, please come back. The sky kept moving up. Sky, please come back. The sky completely ignored them, kept moving up. The next day, people were hungry. The day after that, the people were very hungry. The day after that, oh, they were so hungry. They started talking among themselves, what are we going to do? Somebody said, we're going to have to have grow some food. Well, how, do, how, how can we do that? We're going to have to find some seeds. Well, what will we do with the seeds? We have to plant them. Well, how do we do that? We have to dig some holes. And so they got some digging tools. They dug in the dirt. They made rows. They took the seeds. They put them in the rows. They put the dirt on top of the seeds. They watered the, the earth. They watered the earth some more. They planted some more seeds. They watched the seeds grow. They picked the plants when they were ready. They planted food. They worked together. They fed themselves. They worked. They worked, created all the things they needed. And that's why people have to work today. People work together to create all the things they need to live. To live. That's right. That's why people have to work. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Mm. A lot of the stories that people tell are to answer questions. Why? The question why? Do you go around asking your parents and your teachers why? 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 Well, why? Well, why? And don't, don't those adults sometimes get tired of you saying why? But it's important. It's important to know why. It's important to ask why. And Many, 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 many years ago, people told stories to try to explain why. Today, scientists do experiments to, to answer questions why. Maybe you do ex experiments to answer your questions about why. It's important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I have another instrument I would like to show you. It's one of my favorites. Actually, all instruments are my favorites. This one comes from Nigeria, West Africa. It's made from a gourd. I don't know if you know about gourds. I'll try to explain it. A gourd is a plant. It grows on vines. Vines are these little squiggly stems have leaves on them. They usually grow close to the close to the ground. You know pumpkins, right? Pumpkins grow on vines. Some pumpkins get really big, right? You know about squash? Squash grow on vines. Well, gourds are in like the pumpkin family, squash family, okay? Some of them get really hard. This one was cut in half. So this is half of a gourd. And once it was cut in half, the, the meat or the fruit was dug out 
the seeds were taken out and then some wood was glued onto the top of it and little pieces of metal were attached to it. And this looks like the, the pieces of metal look like they're nails that have been hammered until they're flat. And the way I play it is to take my thumb and press down on the end of the, the key and then let it go. And when I let it go, the key vibrates, it moves up and down. And that vibration travels through the air and, and reaches your ear. And then you hear a musical tone. Now, if I, I press down real hard, the tone, it might be unpleasant to you. If I press a little softer, it might sound better. Okay, so now I'm gonna use both thumbs and see if I can make a little music. So I call this instrument Mbira. That's that's one of the names it's called in uh, Zimbabwe, which is a country in South Africa, Southern Africa. But this instrument is found in so many countries of Africa, and it's got it's got hundreds of different names. I just know a few of the names. So some people call it Mbira. Some people call it Kalimba. Other people call it Likembe. Some people call it Thum. Uh, let's see. Some people call it Sanzi. So many names that I don't know all of them. Some of these, sometimes they go use gourds to make the instruments. Sometimes they use wooden boxes. Uh, sometimes they use cans. It's amazing that uh, there's a whole universe of instruments that uh, are like this. And you know what? You can even make it. You might find a book in your library on how to make these instruments. Now, some people call them thumb pianos because you can play them with your thumb. Now, I used to call it a thumb piano, but one of my storyteller friends said, you know, Shanta, that's not, that's not a, a good name to call it because these instruments were around a long time before the piano was ever created. So really, the piano should be called a big embira because the embira came first. So I try not to call it a thumb piano anymore just to be historically accurate. I have another one. It's my favorite. It's, it's my favorite of favorites because I like all the instruments, right? Okay, here it is. It's also made from a gourd. First one was made in Nigeria, West Africa. This one was made all the way on the south side of Chicago. That's where I was born. That's where I lived for most of my life. Chicago, south side of Chicago, yeah. So another gourd, a different shape, more keys. So guess what? It's gonna sound different. That's right.
K was lonely. She lived in a house that was full of people. Her mother, her, her mother father, grandfather, many brothers. But it was it was kind of hard because her mother had to work really hard. My K had to work really hard. She wasn't allowed to go to school brother could go to school. She just had to work and work and work and work and work. But she really wanted to learn. She wanted to learn like her brother did. So the brother, one of the brothers, he would teach he would teach my K A things when he got from home from school. If she finished her work. But sometimes she wasn't finished, so then he would read to her. And one day, while the brother was reading to my K.A., she heard something in a story about friends. She said, oh, wow, I wonder what it would be like to have a friend. She thought about it. She really wanted to have a friend. She, her, her, her father had friends, and her grandfather had friends, and, Maybe her brother was a friend, but no, she didn't think her brother was a friend. It was something extra. There was something special about a friend. And she kept thinking about it. She kept hoping about it. And one day she took a bucket. She had to go down to the river and get water. She had to go to the well and get water. And one time when she took her bucket down to the water, she looked into the water. And she saw someone in the water. She looked in the water and... The one that she saw, she smiled and she nodded her head and and that one looked back at her, smiled and nodded too. So she thought that that was an agreement that they would meet back the next day at the same time and so they did. They sat together, they spent time together, they grew together, but they never ever spoke a single word to each other until one day. Monkey was so excited, she ran down to the water. She was so excited, she started talking, and then she realized that her friend would not be able to speak back to her in a voice other than her own, but it was all right. Because by then, she knew that she had a friend. changed. Father spent more time with her. Treated her like she was an important person. Children from the neighborhood knocked on the door, inviting Monkey to come outside and play and listen to stories and look at the stars. The water near you, take a look at it. The one that you see, gaze in the eye. Smile, share a nod, come to know your oldest friend. Have you ever heard of Anansi the Spider? Some people call him a Nancy. Some people call him Aunt Nancy. Hmm. But the one thing that we know for sure is that a Nazi's always trying to outsmart someone. A Nazi is usually a spider. Sometimes he's a man. He shows up in so many of the stories of West Africa that some people say that all of the stories in the world belong to a Nazi. Now, this story comes from the African diaspora. The African diaspora is all the places in the world where black people live. For example, the Bahamas. I learned this story from Miss Augusta Baker. 
She was a great storyteller. She was a librarian who taught other librarians how to be good storytellers. She said that Anansi and Brer Tiger were both in love with Miss Krishiba. And there were things that Miss Krishiba liked about Anansi. There were things that she liked about Brer Tiger and she could not make up her mind which one of these guys she wanted to marry. Now, when Anansi found out that Miss Krishiba was having somebody else over for company, he got very upset. He did not like having any competition. He decided to get rid of his competition once and for all. So the next time he went to visit Miss Krishiba, he said, Miss Krishiba, I do not like the company you're keeping. Well, Anansi, who, who are you talking about? I'm talking about Brer Tiger. Well, I find Brer Tiger to be quite a nice gentleman, but Miss Krishiba, don't you know? He's nothing but an old riding horse. Riding horse? Anansi, how could you say such a thing? I know it for a fact. He was my father's best riding horse. Well, the next time Brer, Brer Tiger came to call on Miss Krishiba, he could not help but notice that her behavior had changed. She finally had to say something. Miss Krishiba, why are you treating me so cold? This is not like you. I'll tell you the truth, Bear Tiger. I've heard some very disturbing news about you. Well, what could that be? I have heard that you, Bear Tiger, I've heard that you are a riding horse. Riding horse? Who said I was a riding horse? Well, it was Brother Nancy. He's going to come back here and he's going to tell you that he lied. So Bear Tiger went running through the forest toward Nancy's house. But I have to tell you that at this time, Ty is. Brer Tiger ran on two legs. All the tigers ran on two legs like we did, like we do. Brer Tiger went running through the forest, knocked down the front door of Anansi's house and said, get up out of that bed. Come tell Miss Kashiba that you lied, lied. I can't, I'm sick. Brer Tiger, I've had this high, high fever for many days. I, I might have said anything, I've been so sick. You coming to Miss Kashiba's house. I can't, Brer Tiger, I can't make it. But Brer Tiger, maybe, just maybe I could make it there with you. Cause I really want to clear up this misunderstanding. I, I don't, maybe I could make it there with you if you let me. Ride on your back. All right. So, Nancy got up on Brer Tiger's back. But Anansi was small, and Brer Tiger's neck was really large, but that's the only place he could hold on, and, and he couldn't hold on very long before he was complaining, Brer Tiger, your neck is too big, I feel like I'm going to fall, I can't. He'll come into Miss Kashiba's house. Well, Brer Tiger, maybe, just maybe, if you could get a rope and tie it around your neck, I'd have something to hold on to. Well, all right. So they got a rope. Well, Brer Anansi's holding on the rope and swinging from side to side, and they don't get much further before he complains again. Brer Tiger, I still feel like I'm going to fall. I can't hold on. You're coming to Miss Kashiba's house. But Brer Tiger, maybe, just maybe, I could, I could make it there if you could get down on all four of your legs. Well, all right. So Brer Tiger got down on all fours. They didn't get very far before Nasi was complaining again. Brett Tiger, why are you going so fast? You know I'm sick. You're coming to Miss Kersheba's house. Brett Tiger, maybe, just maybe, I could make it there with you if, if you could get a stick and so I could tap you and let you know when to slow down. Well, all right. Well, while all this was going on, Miss Kersheba had told all her relatives, all her neighbors, all of her friends about uh, the problem that Anansi and Brett Tiger were having with each other. And all these folk had gathered in front of Miss Kersheba's house. Now, uh, Anansi and Brett Tiger were getting close to the house. Anansi saw Miss Kersheba on her balcony. He saw all the folk gathered in front of Miss Kersheba's house, so he pulled that rope as tight as he could around Brer Tiger's neck. He dug his knees into Brer Tiger's back. He started beating Brer Tiger unmercifully with that stick so that all Brer Tiger could do was gallop, 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 just like a horse. He jumped off. He said, see, Miss Kersheba, what I tell you? He's nothing but an old riding horse. 
Poor Brer Tiger was so embarrassed and ashamed that he went running through the forest on all four legs. And don't you know, tigers have been moving around like that ever since. So black people live all over the world. What do we call that? The African diaspora. That's right. Here's a, another instrument found all over the world. This is a seed pod. This one fell off of a a tree, right, it's got little seeds, dried up seeds inside of it. I've seen this in Miami. I've seen something like this in Zimbabwe. I've seen something like this in Illinois. The one in Illinois is much smaller and much flatter. But the thing is, when it's dried up and you shake it, it's an instrument. You can get fancy with it. Some people in West Africa call this Towa, T-O-A, Towa. <laughs> oh, I'm having so much fun with you today. Could you hold up one hand, please? If you take a good look at your hand, you will notice that your thumb, thumb is out here, but your other fingers are up here. Well, according to the Yoruba of West Africa, the thumb used to stick straight up next to the other fingers until one day when the mother of the fingers was away. And this finger said, uh, are you holding your hand up? Because I, I need for you to do this with me, please. This finger said, I'm hungry. Are you doing that? Okay. The next finger said, Let's take the farmer's food. And then the next finger said, that's not right. And then the little finger said, who cares? Yeah. Then all four fingers said, let's go. Well, the thumb said, I don't like it. I'm, I'm staying away from you. And that's why the thumb stays away from all the other fingers. Mm. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Okay. We're living through some, some hard times. And it's just really important that we all try to be our best selves during this time. That we try to, no matter what's going on, we try to shine the light that's inside of us to light up every room that we're in. And that light can be in the form of a smile. It can be in the form of a kind word, or a helping hand, or just being the best person that we can be. And one of the songs that comes from the African American tradition, one of the old songs, the new songs that you probably already know, that if we could sing it together right now, it would be just perfect, is this little light of mine. And we can add we can make up verses to go with it, but I just like for you to sing these verses with me and to carry this song with you wherever you go, okay? Let it 
we've been celebrating the stories of Africa. Let's just do a little chant. A chant is a song. It only has a few words. In this case, our chant has one word, Africa. You sing it with me. Ooh la 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 la, Africa. 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 Ooh la 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 la. Africa, ooh la 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 la, Africa, ooh la 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 la, Africa. Beautiful. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your evening. If you liked any of the stories, will you tell them to someone else? That's how we keep the stories alive. People keep telling them. Let's say goodbye to each other in one of the languages of Africa. Did you know that there are thousands of different languages spoken in Africa? One of them is Kiswahili. When people in, in East Africa, some of them say goodbye to each other, they say, Kwaheri. Let's try that. Kwaheri. Goodbye.